This built-in was an absolute pain in my ass. Let me tell you, I really f***ed this thing up. So a year ago, I made a video how I'm turning my entire basement into my dream studio. And that started with getting this all figured out and then building the other studio upstairs as my temporary small one while I get the rest of this done down here. And that one went smooth. We already have a video on that. And we have the other original video about my plan for down here. In that original video, I said that I was hoping to have all this done within a year. And if you look around, it's been way more than a year and I'm not even close. So yeah. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys where we're at in the progress, what's worked, what hasn't worked, all the hiccups along the way. This could be helpful for someone that is just doing a basement renovation themselves or someone that's trying to plan out how to actually integrate their personal and their business, everything into one, because it's very challenging to make sure that it works for the business and works as a functional basement for just hanging out in. So let's start walking around. When you walk down the stairs, the stairs are behind you. This is the main living room that I still want to use for a lot of our unboxings and stuff. I don't like doing unboxings at my desks. I want to be able to come downstairs, sit on a couch, unbox stuff, again, with my camera mounts that I'm going to have built in this over here and just do the unboxings and the other generic stuff that I like to do. So this room majorly has not changed for the most part as far as design. We are still going to have a couch here. We're still going to have a TV over here, except now there is a massive built-in. The TV is going to go in the built-in here, sound bar, fireplace. This going to be really cool. Now, a couple things I did wrong with this. I built it originally too far out. It was just taking up too much of space. So I had to shrink it, put it back in. It's still taking up a lot of space, but there's not a lot I can do because of the plumbing that has to run behind it in the bulkhead. So not a lot I can do about that situation there. As far as the TV goes, I didn't buy the TV yet. I pulled the measurements for the TV online. And then what I did is I actually decided I'm, I'm just gonna go buy the TV. I found a good deal on it. And so I bought the TV, checked it, and it did not fit. So then I had to take all the supports out, move them over to make it so it could actually fit the TV. Now I have a big TV that's in the way of me trying to work on stuff. Not all I can do about that. I'm happy I have this now and at least I know it fits in there. So that was almost a huge mistake. I then decided to put a sound bar, which was another blocking stuff I had to build into here. That's kind of where we're at with that now. We have built-in storage on both sides with some cabinets. I was able to snipe on Facebook for a good deal. So as far as the original plan goes, this actually went relatively smooth. The only challenge has been all the bulkheads and making sure it works with the plumbing and the other structural posts and stuff and making it a symmetrical design in a very asymmetric space. Um, which has made the built-in a little bigger than I want. But again, we're working with what we have. Now, let's continue this way. Come with me. Storage room, again, pretty unchanged. How this works is this could be stored for a lot of our, our camera equipment, some of my tools, my tax stuff, all my documents and stuff. Just be a generic storage room for me. There'll be a doorway here. And then this is where we have access to our panel and to do all of that kind of stuff. So this is pretty much unchanged. I actually think this was the most functional thing I've built so far and the most helpful to get all of our stuff out of the way so I can focus on building. So this has been quite nice. Let's go over here. Now, the slowest part of this entire process has been the staircase. When we moved in, the staircase wobbled. The landing was really unstable. I had no idea what was going on underneath here. The more I looked, the more issues I found with this staircase. So underneath this landing, all the wood was completely rotted out. There was moisture underneath. I had to replace the entire landing with pressure treated material Material, put a new piece of OSB and rebuild this first to at least make it safe to walk down here. After that, I've had to redo all the stairs and all the walls and all the structural support for these stairs was falling apart. It was basically just wedged into place. It was coming out. So I'd have to move one piece of the structural, put in a big new piece like this, then move another piece and do that over and over again until I worked all the way around the stairs to rebuild all the structural supports for the stairs. There also used to be a couple walls that were here. I got rid of those walls, resupported everything better, and the stairs are kind of done now. But yeah, doing all this kind of stuff just took forever to have it done and do it well and make sure I was not leaving the stairs unsupported along the way while I was doing so. As a one man crew, getting this done was tricky. Let's go into here. Now this is still gonna be my office space when you walk through this doorway here. Design has changed a little bit since then, but not much. It's still gonna be basically a skeleton of a bedroom that we build on top of to make it an office space for me. So not a lot has changed on this end here. It's pretty much just a room with some walls I've put up. This is the final room. This is the laundry room. I actually didn't start on the basement until January of this year. We have some of it kind of already built out. I'm a little ahead of schedule on this. Storage on this side here, and there's gonna be an identical set of bins that go on the opposite wall from it. That's pretty much the basement. So now let's quickly talk about what's worked, what hasn't worked, and everything along the way. The first place I had a major hiccup was the plumbing. I had to get all the plumbing replaced in the house, get rid of all the poly B and replace it with modern PEX. Now what I forgot was when they were coming to do that in February, I forgot that I had to have the laundry room completely done so they ran it exactly in the right spots. If I didn't have the laundry room done, they wouldn't have known where to put the pipes for my conceptual design of what I wanted the laundry room to be. So they were coming in like three weeks and I had to rush and get the entire laundry room done in a usable state where they understood where 
where everything was gonna go. So I did that, I got about 50% of the way. They came in, did all the plumbing. I did the other 50% to make it usable for us. And now it's like one really finished part and the rest of the basement is still a mess. So it kind of looks weird, but is what it is. Today's video is brought to you by Drymax. Now, if you're familiar with our channel, you've seen Drymax on a ton of guys across the NFL, including CeeDee Lamb, Jalen Ramsey, Justin Herbert, and Jamar Chase. But honestly, we could be here for a really long time if we went through every guy in the NFL that wears Drymax chin savers or their socks. And we actually have videos explaining how the technology works in the Drymax socks and the Drymax chin savers you can check out too. Essentially, Drymax is a company that specializes in moisture transfer and antimicrobial products. They sell the chin saver, which comes in the tube and the easy on and off version with that strip of Velcro. And they sell tons of different sock styles worn by different guys across Across the leak. Here's how it works. The super hydrophobic Drymax fiber layer that rests against your chin is also infused with coupon copper. That copper releases millions of ions which helps improve your skin's health and appearance. Worn regularly next to your skin, the coupon copper has been proven to improve your skin's elasticity, softness, appearance, tone, and texture. The most important part for me though is the hydrophobic fibers which pulls all the moisture away from your skin keeping you dry. This is why the socks are so popular in the league keeping your feet dry and odor free. Now if you want to learn more about Drymax socks and their chin saver covers visit all the links down below where we have links to both of our videos we put out and their website. Again thanks to Drymax for sponsoring this video. Back to it. After that, I started to tackle all the framing of all the walls. The framing for the most part was actually pretty simple to do. That wasn't a big concern of mine because it's not really anything crazy. I spent a lot of time figuring out layout, um, which has definitely changed a little bit since the beginning. But overall, framing, not that bad. Worked my way around. Now, as far as the timeline goes, like I said, I was hoping to have this done in a year, but I did not expect in the first year of our home ownership how many different other things would come up that we would need to deal with that took a lot of time. I had to build my office. We went away in the summer. We had to fix the roof, we've had to fix some windows, I had to do a bunch of landscaping, I had to do a bunch of grading outside to make sure that any work I do down here doesn't get ruined by a flood when we get a bunch of rain in July. There's so many different projects like that, that just with owning a house and getting a house for the first time and the amount of work that this house needed in certain sections that I just wasn't prepared for. The biggest one is the staircase. I thought the staircase would be a one day thing just to take out some walls and kind of add in some new, you know, walls and whatnot. Um, but then I started taking it apart and then I realized all the issues with it. And then I realized I should change my design to work with that. And it grew and grew and grew. And I've been working on the staircase for like three weeks now on and off trying to get it all done. And it's been a pain. As far as the basement goes, I'm yeah, I'm actually only like three months into the project Project, but I even feel like I'm behind on that schedule because the framing has taken way longer. Now, as far as what I have to do next, I'm finishing up the framing in the next coming weeks. Then we have to run electrical. After electrical is done, then we have to do um, all the insulation in the roof here to make sure it's a lot more soundproof. Then after the insulation is done, we can drywall. Then putting it all back together, mixed with work, our plans for the summer, everything we already have planned in the fall. I don't see this being done within this calendar year. I don't, I probably see it a year from now. It doesn't feel like a lot of work, but the framing didn't feel like a lot of work and I'm more than a month into it at this point. So it's gonna take me a while. Now, having said that, I still have my studio upstairs. The studio upstairs is still completely serviceable, but I just want something a little bit bigger and I'm hoping that this project would be farther along by now, but it's not and I'm kind of slowly getting through it. If you guys want more updated videos for this project, leave comments down below and I can look into doing that as like shorts or TikToks or whatever else you want. Just kind of let me know what you're interested in is footage for something like this. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll see you next time. Hopefully we're in a better spot. See ya.